Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Now, did our arrogant Liz Truss suffer more PMQ's punishment from Keir Starmer yesterday? Yes, this was our ever-increasingly ageing Prime Minister's third PMQ's and quite clearly the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, wanted to basically hit the ground running by cracking a joke at the expense of the Prime Minister in name only about her new book that's coming out soon. Now comes the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. A book is being written about the Prime Minister's time in office. <laughs> Apparently it's going to be out by Christmas. Is that the release date or the title? <laughs> just under two months, and I have delivered the energy price guarantee, making sure that people aren't paying £6,000 bills this winter. I've reversed the national insurance increase, and I've also taken steps, and we will be taking steps, to crack down on the militant unions. Yeah. Now, what, what, Mr Speaker, I think... Mr Speaker, that is more of a record of action than the Honourable Gentleman in his two and a half years in the job. Yeah. Oh, of course she didn't answer. And I get the feeling that it wasn't the point really. It's a sort of thing like in football matches, you know, whether you go to an away match, play away, or you're playing in in front of your home crowd and the opposing side you know, might have a Captain Marvel or a midfield general or a star striker that's scoring goals for fun and, but they have a bit of a soft underbelly and uh, as one pundit called it it's a bit of a reducer you clatter in them and get stuck into them and just knock them out of the game and let's be honest here she had nothing did she all she could Paddle on was, I'm here to deliver, you know, while she's holding that invisible cup. Or, I'm very clear by not being very clear. Or, the new one now is to insult hardworking people who are, you know, striking, you know, because they're pay packets. Don't go far enough to make ends meet at the end of the week. But she decides to call them skivers and shirkers and militant, militant unionists or whatever. But then came the pantomime season. You know the bit where, you, as your kids, you know, the big bad wolf is behind him screaming and they all say, Look, he's behind you! Oh, no, he isn't! Do anything. Yes, Starmer! Mr Speaker, the only mandate she's ever had is from members opposite. Yeah. It was a mandate built on fantasy economics yeah. and it ended in disaster. Yeah. Yeah. The country's got nothing to show for it except the destruction of the economy and the implosion of the Tory party. Yeah. I've got the list here. 45p tax cut, gone. Yeah. Corporation tax cut, Gone. 20p tax cut. Gone. Two year energy freeze. Gone. Tax free shopping. Gone. Economic credibility. Gone. And her supposed best friend, the former Chancellor, he's gone as well. They're all gone. So why is she still here? I'm a fighter and not a quitter. I have acted in the national interest to make sure that we have economic stability. Prime Minister, order, order. I'm going to hear the Prime Minister. I suggest that all members need to hear the answer. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. We have delivered on the energy price guarantee. We have. We've delivered on the energy price guarantee. We've delivered on national insurance. We are going to deliver to stop the militant trade unions disrupting our railways. The honourable gentleman has no idea. He has no plan, and he has no alternative. <laughs> that was brutal, wasn't it? You've got to admit she's toast, didn't you? Especially the economic credibility. Gone! 
because they're right out there. They have no economic credibility whatsoever. She just had nowhere to go, did she? She's aging rapidly, isn't she? She looks 20 years older than what she was six years ago, didn't she? It's almost like cruelty to just keep her there, isn't it? If she was a boxer, clearly, they'd have looked after her best interests and thrown in the towel, and if she was an injured horse, they would have, well, you know what I mean. But anyway, anyway, you you might be wondering, I've done this a little bit different. A little little bit, because one or two people have said, while my picture was in the House of Commons, while they're doing their bit, I was a bit of a distraction. And I thought, well, yeah, I see the point. And let's be honest, it's they're more important than this ugly mush, you know. I've got a face you can chop meat on. The last thing you want is me distracting you. So... I'll, when it comes to stuff like that, I'll take myself out of the way so you can concentrate on the stars of the show. But anyway, I do hope you enjoy this this video. There'll be a couple of more. One with uh, Ian Blackford. He was brilliant. And uh, there's another one with Ed David. And there's a bit of a point of order. And that's uh, very, very interesting. So I shall leave the video here. And until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care. <laughs>